It's 7.30 in the morning and we are about to go skiing and I'm switching cameras. I'm going to shoot on the 5D for photos and video today because we're going skiing and I don't want to carry two big cameras around. Oh, and I have a zoom lens now. This is the 24 to 70. Just this morning, there is a replacement announced for this Rode VideoMic Pro that is on the camera right now. Where'd you guys get all these snow pants? I have, I have to buy snow pants? Oh, oh my god, there he is! No, there's no mountain. I'm gonna fall. Your fucking face sitting in Okay, so this new video mic pro plus is directly relevant to me because what I've been doing all week is forgetting to turn on the mic, but this one is lithium ion batteries. And when you charge them, they last for a hundred. Oh, we're here. Okay, so as I was saying, this new Video Mic Pro Plus has internal lithium ion batteries that last for 100 hours, so you can basically just leave it on all the time and it automatically turns on and off as you plug the mic in and out. So, the idea is it won't be dying all the time. This is very interesting to me. He, somebody took a tumble. <laughs> We're halfway through the day, taking a break from skiing, and in honor of this new Rode VideoMic Pro Plus announcement, I want to test the Rode VideoMic Pro that we're using right now in the quickest, dirtiest way possible. So right now I'm just in a really noisy cafeteria room at kind of optimal camera settings. This is like normal vlogging environment. It should sound as good as it can. The decibels are turned up to 20, and the camera amplification is turned down to almost zero, so this should be as clean of a signal as we can get. And now we have the camera using its internal mic, and this should be the worst audio possible. Okay, here's another test in this very noisy room with the camera held less than a foot from my face. And now we are back to the camera microphone, still about a foot away from my face. How does this sound? All right, let's try this outside. It's pretty damn windy. I've got the basic windsock on and the high-pass filter activated. So this should be cutting out a lot of the bass frequencies from the wind. Make it sound a little bit better. Let's try turning it off. Now we are using it without the bass being removed. Listen to that wind. Okay, now one last test. This is using the internal microphone. How windy is this? Okay, I found somewhere a little bit quieter. This should be a little more ideal for a recording environment. Still going through the road at the moment. And just so you know, this has been on automatic volume for the last few tests. Last test, we're back to the internal microphone on the camera. Man, when I don't have image stabilization, the shaky hand from holding such a heavy camera out really uh, adds up. Now I'm in LA, a bit of a change of scenery, change of climate, and I had a chance to listen to those clips and have some thoughts about them. You may have noticed that this isn't actually a microphone test since all I'm really doing is comparing on-camera audio with a built-in crappy mic to a $300 or whatever external microphone that's obviously going to sound better. And I'm talking about this new mic that hasn't been released yet and that's what I'm really curious about. So my biggest problem with this microphone is that I constantly turn it off and forget to turn it back on because I'm worried about the batteries burning out. I've done this more times than I can count. But it sounds fantastic. The bass response is awesome. It picks up the person in front of the camera really well and it cuts out a lot of the room noise. An interesting side effect is that you can really hear the person in front of the camera much better because it's not as omnidirectional of a microphone. But if you're holding the camera and pointed away, you hear yourself a lot less. I mean, it's worth it. You still sound better, but it's an interesting side effect. The biggest improvement I need is to be able to just grab my camera and go and that it's always set up and it's always ready to go. So the fact that as long as that mic jack is plugged in, it'll detect when the camera is on, when it's recording, and that's the only time it's drawing power from the battery. With this older version of the Rode VideoMic Pro, I kept turning it off and forgetting it was off. I kept worrying about the battery, even though it lasted pretty long. So I'm still gonna test out the Rode Micro, which is that really small one that doesn't need any power draw, but listening to samples, it is a lot more tinny. It doesn't have as much depth to the sound. Uh, let's look at this hotel a little bit more. It's pretty cool. This is nice. What does the mic sound like in here? This sounds cool. We're back from our trip and all I really learned is the difference between using a big beautiful on-camera mic and comparing it to no microphone. I already know that I'd rather have a mic when I'm vlogging, but I, I still haven't really decided which one. 
I need to do some A-B comparison tests and I know just the guys to help me do it. Existence on both sides of New all right, I'm here at the camera store to meet up with a couple of friends that uh, know even more about cameras than I do. Hey, what do you got there, Jordan? We have a GH5, which is still pre-production, not reviewable, but you should absolutely <laughs> throw your 5D4 oh, away. That looks great. That looks great. Here, let me hold it. Hey, that's better. All right, so I'm here with hey, Camera, camera Store TV, TV uh, everybody's favorite camera review channel, and um, they're going to help me find the perfect vlogging microphone since uh, they have them all here. Okay, guys, so you guys, you're gonna be my test subjects, okay? Sounds good. Love it. We have clear, beautiful voices. <laughs> got different responses. I've, I've got a much mind. lower, warmer, more soothing <laughs> voice. I'd say mine's You have like an edgy, more. abrasive. All right, so we're gonna start with what I've been using the last few days, the Rode VideoMic Pro, which has been replaced, but the new one should sound pretty similar. Okay, guys, so give me some sounds and let's hear it. Okay, so we seem to be on a uh, Rode VideoMic Pro, For which sure. is kind of the most popular onboard microphone. Um, there's a Rycote version, but now there's a VideoMic Pro Plus that we don't have here. Right, I mean, one of the things with the VideoMic Pro, it's a powered microphone, yeah. excellent for getting the distance that you want, great on cameras that don't have very good preamps. Yeah, like if it's a DSLR yeah. or something, it sends a hot signal out, you can turn you it down in camera that. and get good sound. It's very warm as well, it's kind of a filmmaking microphone. It does have a microphone. nice sound. They can get a little muddy. Okay, that so. nine volt battery can be a pain in the butt to get in there too, so I like that the new, the new mic, the Pro Plus, is gonna have lithium battery, much easier. Yeah. Yeah. automatically sensing when you plug it in, plug it out. It's just a bunch of smart, more intuitive design. Yeah, exactly. All right, now we're testing out the Sennheiser MK400. Is that MK right, guys? E400. MKE400. So let's hear it sound. Yeah, so, so the Sennheiser MK400, we've been selling this for many, many years. I mean, it's been on the market basically unchanged. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do love the small design. It's yeah. a super compact profile. The size is the big advantage here, but there's mm. sacrifices to that. It just runs on a single AAA. The yeah. preamp is a lot weaker than that VideoMic Pro. For sure. Uh, and the sound is pretty different as well. This is a very bright microphone, um, so yeah. it's very clear. But I do find it sounds very clinical, more like a podium microphone. Yeah, we did find that. A lot of people do like the very realistic impression you get from the Sennheiser. But when you're primarily uh, recording people's voices, it's nice to have that rich tone and that warmth. It yeah. just really helps to enhance it. I do think it's a little expensive for what you get as well. For Price sure. hasn't budged on this in years, and it really should come down by this point. It hasn't really changed in many years, to be honest. It needs no. some improvements. Time for an update. Mm -hmm. Okay, and finally, we're on the Rode Video Micro, which is what I've been talking about. It's extremely small, really cheap, and there's no preamp, but enough about me. <laughs> Tell me what this mic is, guys. I, I love this little mic. Mm -hmm. If you've got a camera with a good preamp, like a Panasonic or a Sony or a dedicated yeah. camcorder, makes a ton of sense. A very small profile on it. Uh, this is nice because you get a lot of benefits like the Sennheiser MKE has, but this has got a Rycote shock mount. The thing's shaking right now, but you know none of that's going to transfer. It's not going to transfer. Absolutely. I love that they throw a dead cat in the box for you too, mm -hmm. which most of the other ones don't. Mm -hmm. But you do have to be aware if you drop this on like a Canon, a Nikon, a Fuji, something with a weak amp, then yeah. signal strength isn't quite as good. But the actual quality of the mic is fantastic. $79 is insane. But you bring up a good point. Like Tyler's using the GH5 right now. He's fairly He's close to us. He's a very lucky us. man. Yes. Very lucky man. <laughs> but if he had to get further away and shoot 20 foot distance or whatever. Like documentary distance. The Sennheiser could do it. The Rode Video Mic Pro can do it. This, this guy's is going to be a little dodgy. Yeah. So you're going to get a lot of hiss. That baseline's going to suck. Yeah. God, you're eloquent. I know. Okay, so. Now that I've had a chance to really listen to these carefully and a few other samples, watch other people's YouTube videos, I have a pretty good idea what these mics sound like and what I need to consider when choosing a vlog microphone and maybe what you could consider as well. Clearly the Rode VideoMic Pro sounds the best out of these. It's got a lot more bass response and it's similar to the NTG1, which is the shotgun mic that I use for my more commercial work. I'm making some assumptions now, but probably the new mic is gonna sound at least as good, maybe a little bit better. But obviously there's more to think about here than just the audio quality. Rode did win that one, but it is also the most expensive mic. And you've gotta think about how are people watching your content. So when I watch these videos on a laptop or on my iPhone, there isn't enough bass coming out of the speakers to hear any difference. They are honestly exactly the same. So I have to know that only a certain percentage of people are even gonna hear this difference because they're gonna be using real headphones and the rest won't notice the difference. I'll be going through that extra hassle for no reason. The Rode Video Micro sounded surprisingly good. It had a lot of clarity. You could really hear what people were saying and you could also hear behind the camera. The Rode had that problem of that there was so much bass that the nearest voice to the mic would kind of be like muffled and hard to tell. So behind the mic, you can't hear yourself as clearly as with both the Sennheiser and the Rode Micro. So that was like an interesting uh, quality improvement on these worst microphones. 
And I'll just say that Sennheiser was the worst of the bunch, so don't even consider it. But if you are considering the Rode Video Micro, definitely think about which camera you're using, especially watching other people's more controlled YouTube tests where they're in a studio environment and you can hear the noise floor. On a Canon where the preamps are not very good, you can hear a ton of noise because the camera needs to boost the signal instead of a better preamp inside of the microphone. On the Sonys and the Panasonics, like Jordan was talking about, the preamp is good and you don't hear that noise floor. So it's actually not that important, especially in a noisy environment like they were in or like most vlogs are taken in. Also, just a few thoughts about the GH5 footage. It looks really, really good. This is a pre-production model. It did not have vlog on it yet, so I couldn't compare that. But the 10-bit image is really great. You can stretch it around and post a lot. Panasonic did mention, again, this is pre-production firmware. Uh, the focus was a little iffy, and that is a firmware thing. Ignore the focus. Look at the image quality. It was good. I'm really excited for this camera. Also, the image stabilization was fantastic. I'm in the market for a gimbal right now, and it's kind of frustrating that all these cameras are coming out with a kind of perfect image stabilization that may mean you don't need to use a gimbal. Right when I'm about to buy one, I don't really know what I'm gonna do. But the Panasonic GH5 raises the bar for everybody, especially having integrated waveforms. Like this is a video camera. They really thought about it. They thought about professionals and now both Canon and Sony are falling behind in interesting ways. The market is constantly being pushed forward quickly and that's really exciting to watch. So now I have a better idea of what I'm looking for. If I was gonna go cheap, I'd go for the Rode Video Micro, and if I was gonna go expensive, I'd go for the Rode Video Mic Plus Pro, Pro Plus. And really, there's not much in between. There's some cheap mics that are really big. I would not even consider those. The Rode Video Micro is good enough and is way smaller and cheaper. And I hope to see you guys on the internet. Come follow me on Instagram. See ya.